We start off with the very first wave makers, which were rather duck-like. There's one making some rather short waves, running along past a single wave probe to the first balsa wood duck with an external dynamometer, a couple of magnets and a couple of coils like big galvanometers, and uh, supported on a fixed mounting, connected to the dynamometer by that little push rod and an elastic band. And we were able to get to 90% efficiency with this first duck. Now we've got an internal dynamometer. You can see the cable coming up from below the water. And this is still a fixed mounting, but we've got strain gauges uh, at the top of the mounting and to the side, which give us the heave and surge forces. Now we're injecting some tracing fluid to show the water movement. A time exposure is, looks very nice because you can see the circles and you can see the decaying motion. And the, you can see some ballast weights in the front of the belly of the duck to see the ends of round rods that we poke through. Now we've got an array of early duck models and a later model of Wavemaker. This was a prototype of one of the units in the wide tank. It's got a wave straightener in front of it and now you can see a pair of wave gauges in the top middle of the picture, quarter of a wavelength apart used to measure standing wave ratio. And then we come around to the control bench. Um, this was all analog electronics uh, built during the mid and late 70s and just coming off we find the current digital computer replacements for it. Uh, a PET and a serious machine now both looking rather aged. There's the front view of the wave maker. It's able to absorb reflections. It's got a force and velocity feedback control around it and it's itself a wave energy device. Mm. And it has a plastic rolling seal so that there's water only on one side. Uh, that's been working pretty steadily since 1976. Here's a closer view of the two floats. They measure the waves right across the width of the tank. Um, they work by having a micrometer movement coupled to a heaving float through a straight line motion and we amplify the velocity signal and integrate it. That's a pitch heave surge rig which allows a duct to have a controlled inertia and damping and compliance on its mounting. Again internal dyna dynamometers but now we've got one of the late model ducts with lovely rounded corners and various target marks on. You can see a bit of mounting movement going on. We can dial up any stiffness that we require and we can make it yield at what we expect the economic yield point would be non-destructively. Um, we no longer put inertial weights on those arms but we could pile on extra weight room for a wave gauge behind the model, there's another wave gauge, and then we go into the beach. This is made out of Expermet, which is an expanded aluminium, it gives you millions of sharp corners and not much bulk, and it's arranged in a triangle like the bow of a ship. There's a rather large wave coming into the tapering Expermet beach, fading away, and of course the reflection has to fight its way out, so you get another lot of attenuation on the way out. At big waves, it's really quite a good beach. We think it holds the world's record of about 2%.